everybody. Welcome back to another uh, interview. Today is just me, no Jock. So just mic'd up mic interview. And we're joined by our very special guest, Chris O'Brien. Chris, say what's up. What's up, everyone? I'm Chris. I just wanted to uh, start this off by saying uh, you got to listen to Young Mike's song <laughs> called Be Alone. I just want to fucking be alone in my new car. I ain't fucking with no bitches, bitches unless you heard. <laughs> Me and Chris also got a song out on SoundCloud. It's called I. It was it was released in 2019. You guys should go check it out. And me and Chris got more music on the way. So just get yes, ready sir. for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, Chris, I like to start these interviews off by asking a simple question. Why are you here? Like, why? What? What's so special about you that we chose you to interview you? I think I'm a man of culture. I, I know about music. I know about sports. You could see the bench behind me. Working out is my life now mm-hmm. that uh, coronavirus happened. So I've been bored. But I think I think I'm a cultured guy. I think I have some insight to portray onto these people who are watching. Let me ask you a really important question because there, there, you you can have all the culture in the world, but not everybody could be what you once were. Can you tell us about what I'm referring to? I think you're referring to my my little basketball career. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing basketball since first or second grade. I I was a superstar for some reason. They put me on the B team for CYO in in, uh, elementary school and middle school. And honestly, that was just like I was on the A team in the fourth grade. And then after that, they put me with with the B team kids. And honestly, that was a blessing. Because I was I was a superstar compared to everyone else. Those kids just weren't on my level. I belonged in the A division, but I did what I had to do in the B division. My team was always horrible, but I I did what I had to do. I had some historic performances. What, like what kind of historic performances? Uh there were a few times where I had like thirty or more in a game, and like <laughs> for like for an elementary school kid and a middle school kid, that's pretty good. Like, I remember one time in the fifth grade, so this was my first year on the B team, my fourth grade A team coach pulled up to one of my games, and I was like, bro, I got to show out. And I think I scored, like, 36. It was at Our Lady Star of the Sea. I went crazy. I wish I could be at the star of a basketball game, but, you know, I'm going to be there. Don't worry. The NBA is is watching my videos. They're going to see. They're going to see what's up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that lefty stroke. Yeah, you know me. No, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been working on my mini hoop abilities because my, my cousin Mitch, who was in my previous sports uh-huh. talk episode. Shout out, Mitch. Shout out, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Mitch. Um, just because, like, I feel like your basketball career is really interesting to me. Um, what happened after eighth grade? What, what, like, what? All right. Let me, let me tell you. Tell us. So eighth grade summer, I was going in. So I'm going into high school. And. I knew in the back of my head, like, I don't know if I'm going to make the high school team. I think I can, but I'm not sure. So I was in every single basketball camp. I had, I had a private trainer. I was literally playing basketball, like, from when I was awake to when I was asleep that whole summer, every single day. I worked my ass off. And honestly, it wasn't until I got to high school basketball that my, my NBA dream shattered. So I get there to the first workout, but I had a I had reality that, like, if I'm not superiorly better than these high school kids in Staten Island, I probably ain't making the league. So that's when my, my NBA dream shattered. But I still thought at that time that I could do my thing and I could play uh, I could play college ball, maybe go D3 or something like that. And then tryouts came. I made the team, whatever. And I'm getting, like, no PT. And the, the big men in front of me, they just, they just weren't better than me. But throughout the season, I, I got some playing time. But I was having fun freshman year. Those were my friends. The coach, he would, he was all right, this coach. Then I get to sophomore year for the JV team. There was two kids my age who played JV as freshmen. So they already they were in with the coach. And one of them was a big man. So this is another guy coming to take my minutes. So the season starts. I'm not getting minutes. And this, it's the same thing as freshman year. The rotation was like, let's say, eight guys were getting minutes like normally every game. I was the ninth guy. And then one of the kids on my team gets into a, to a, to a brawl and he gets suspended. And the coach says to me, he's like, Obi, 
blah 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 is out like you got like these are your minutes like you got to step up like be ready or you're gonna go right back to the bench I'm like bro I've been ready for two years like I've been waiting for this like I'm ready the next game comes I, I remember this exactly how it was puts me in with about a minute left in the second quarter we're on offense I set a screen for the point guard. I roll to the basket. I get the pass. I take the layup. I miss. I get fouled. I miss both free throws. Next play down, we're playing man defense. The kid guarding the ball lets their man go right by them. I step in to help. I get there late. They call a foul on me. Coach yanks me right away with 30 seconds left in the half. I played 30 seconds, and I got yanked. And then right after that, right after the game, I told the coach, I was like, yo, like, like I'm done. Like You didn't even give me a chance out there. I played for Like, what am I going to do in 30 seconds? So then after that, I quit, and that was the end of serious basketball. I don't know if I could have played college basketball. The world may never know. Maybe I could have got better if I kept taking it serious. We don't know. But I think I, I definitely could have played on the – I definitely would have made the varsity team. That's not a question. I would have been on the team. Maybe I could have ended up getting minutes over these other kids. I don't know. But I kind of regret it because I never – I sold myself short and I didn't give myself the shot. But my last two years of high school, I played just recreational with my – my friends, we were garbage. My Matty J, Trunk, Steen, all, all those guys. But I don't know what would happen. Playoff time, snap. We're hooping. Two straight Final Four appearances. We should have had two fucking championship appearances. But in junior year, this kid A B. I know he's not watching, so I'm gonna I'm gonna name him. This kid A B. He just he missed like 20 shots. I was playing this game. I was sick. I think I had some type of cold or something like that. And like I, I was putting my all on the line. Next year, senior year, we're in the the lead eight. So we're in the quarterfinals. I'm having the worst game of my life. But Trunks balled the fuck out. Trunks went crazy. And like we were down one. I pass the ball to Trunks. He pulls that shit from three. Now is it. So we won that game. We went to the final four. And we were playing these kids. They they always beat us, these kids. It was one of the better teams. But uh, we're playing them good in the first half. And then in the middle of a play, our coach tells us to change our defense. And we change the defense. And everything just goes downhill. And we ended up getting blown out. But I had some historic moments. We're losing by like 30 or 40. And like it was over. There was like 10 minutes left in the game. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just start shooting some threes. So I pull a three, make it. And for some reason, St. Christopher, that's where I played. People never came to our games. For some reason, this game, it was literally packed out. People all along the sides, all along the stage. Like it was packed out for no reason. So I make the first three. I'm like, I bet. I come back down from a step behind the three-point line. I pull it again. Nothing but net. Two in a row. So then I hit like, hit like two more in a row. So now I'm up to like four in a row and I keep taking a step back. And then I hit one from like not half court, but like near half court. And I, it was butter again. So this is like six in a row, five in a row, something like that. And then the next one, they're like, there's no way he shoots this from back there. I'm not even cross half court yet. And I'm on the side too. I'm walking up the sideline. So I'm not even in the middle. I'm on the sideline behind the half court line and I just pull that bitch and I hit it and I look at the scoreboard. We're down eight. I had 38 points and we're coming back. We were down 30, 40 at one point. And then we're shooting free throws. I'm not on the line. I'm like back at half court and they miss the free throw. And I just see one of the kids on my team just start punching one of the other kids. <laughs> and they both started swinging at each other and fighting, bro. So they both got ejected. So we only had five kids. So we, we had to finish the game with four kids and we ended up losing. So to all those hoopers out there who want to, you know, score like six threes at the end of a game when you're down by 30, how would you tell them to get in that zone? Like to get in that uh, six threes in a row zone? Is there any certain thing or is it just like... like so, I mean, I don't know. I'm not really much of a shooter, but like when I get in the zone sometimes, like, sometimes like I'll just put my head down I'm like bro like I'm taking this game over and I'll just get to the basket at will but like shooting threes sometimes just when you see the first two in a row or three in a row go down like you're just feeling it and you just know you're hot sometimes you just you're just feeling it you know when you're feeling it like I knew that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have pulled from half court if I wasn't feeling it <laughs> I don't even know I 
I only made one shot ever in my, well, I don't play any professional basketball or like any kind of organized basketball, but like when I'm at the park grinding it out with, with the homies, I, um, I've only pulled from half court once and uh, it was an air ball. Who would you say is your best teammate? I don't want to cause any uh, turmoil in your friend group, but my I'm just, best teammate. Yeah. Just call them out. And why? My best teammates trunks. I'm not going to lie. I love playing with everyone. I love playing with all the boys, but like, I feel like Trunks gets me. Trunks knows, like, I'm going to shoot a shit ton of shots. He knows that if they do stuff wrong, he's going to hear it. I'm going to scream at them. Because some of the guys, they just they can't take my screaming. They get, they get offended when I scream. But I'm just very passionate, and I feel like I have a very high basketball IQ. That's okay, Sometimes man. I like to portray my knowledge onto them. But when I'm angry, I yell <laughs> and I scream. Okay. Well, I feel like I got enough on the basketball stuff, but let's move on a little bit to the current situations that are going on. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the main thing that we got to focus on, because I, obviously I don't know if everybody who know who's watching this knows Chris, but Chris has had a crazy transformation in his body, his lifestyle. But the most important thing that I feel like people don't, I mean, obviously they realize it, but the most important transformation is in the beard. So let's talk about it. What happened? How did you do it? What? First of all, show us everything. Can you show us the whole beard? Dang. It's like the same yeah. size as James Harden. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be like James Harden, and the more and more I looked at it, I think I have, like, the LeBron beard going. Type. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but uh, what happened with the beard? So what I happened? grew it out, like, November. I grew it out a little bit, but it wasn't this long. And then when I had the COVID, I shaved, like, right before I had the virus. But when I had the virus, I was too lazy to do anything, so I didn't shave. And it just started growing, and I was just like, you know what? Like, I kind of vibe with it, mm-hmm. and I've been growing it out ever since. And my boy Lee at Untouchable Cuts, if you're on Staten Island, Untouchable Cuts, Dungan Hills, Lee the barber, best barber in the game. He always lines me up, you know what I'm saying? I can't relate because <laughs> I can't grow a beard. But, Did you apply any, like, products to it or something, or you just, like – I just brush it every every morning. I brush it down so it's not, you know, all out here. Mm-hmm. And I just, I wash it as if it's my hair. So every mm-hmm. other day I, I shampoo that, John. Head and shoulders. <laughs> Shout out head and shoulders. No product Thanks. sponsor, but they should. Um, no cap. The last thing that I just wanted to ask about was what's going on with workouts? How's your workouts going? And what do you do to, to those people who want to have a body like you or have the same mission as you? Yeah, I mean, my body's not there yet. It's not where I want it to be, but I've been on my grind over – over the summer when we were locked down, when we first got locked down, I was I was such a lazy bum. I was just sitting in my bed all day playing video games. And I was like, bro, like, I got to snap out of this. So I just started doing body weight stuff, like a bunch of push-ups and stuff like that. I was going for runs. And then I kind of get got more into it. So I ordered resistance bands and I was doing resistance bands workouts. And then as things cleared up, uh, Trunks had a bunch of workout equipment at his crib. Maddie J had some stuff, so we all combined everything I had, we everything we had, and we were all working out in Trunks' backyard. And it was over the summer, so I was really – and because we had limited equipment, so I was really just trying to cut down. And I did, actually. I, I had abs over the summer, so I was doing abs every day. Shout out Athlean X, seven-minute <laughs> ab video. Do that for, like, a month. Eat, eat right, you'll have abs, guaranteed. Then after that, I was doing my normal thing. And I was like, you know what, like, I want to, like, get big. So I was like, I tried to bulk. So I changed my sets of stuff. So, like, for my, I normally do three sets of everything. And I was doing, like, 12, 10, 8 type split. But then I just started to change my reps to, like, aim for 8, but go till failure type of John. And mm-hmm. obviously, you always got a progressive overload. Working out, you got to add, add 5 pounds every set, add 10 pounds, add a little bit of weight every set. But, uh. So I changed, I started to do like, I would do eight on my first set. I'd get like six to eight on my second set. And then my last set, I'd aim for five, but it's really just however many I could do on my last set. When I started doing that, I was 183 pounds. And I think now last time I weighed myself was like a week ago. And I was 192.5, I think. So I put on like 10 pounds. And the most important thing is your diet. Like an- anything 100%. in the gym, muscles, abs, anything, it's all like 90% diet, 10% working out. 
So I was eating like a horse. I was literally eating whatever I could. I was trying to get like 3000 calories a day, 3,500 calories a day. Um, I'm trying to eat a little bit cleaner. So hopefully I could, I could cut down and get that summer bod right for the summer. Yeah, so good. I, I could get all the women at the beach. Good luck with that. And I'll make sure to, to link your Instagram so that, you know, people could follow you Yes. and check, check the progress on what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm single. If there's <laughs> any woman watching this, slide into those DMs. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another interview. Um, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience? Thank you for having me. Make sure you bump that Be Alone by uh, Mikey P. <laughs> and keep tuning into the podcast or whatever the channel, YouTube, yeah, it's whatever a podcast. this is. Podcast. <laughs> what Young Mike and Jock are doing, it's lit. <laughs> and keep tuning in. Big things coming. Chris, we hope to have you on like some future sports talks. And I hope to see you in person soon. Yes, hopefully soon. I'm always down. <laughs> All right.